This video looks at aseptic technique. It is meant for anyone involved in the preparation of sterile products. All of the procedures demonstrated in this video were performed under a vertical laminar flow hood by a right-handed person. Note that the positioning of the objects within the hood and the position of the hands and the supplies may differ if the manipulations are performed under a horizontal laminar flow hood or by a left-handed person. We suggest that you view this video with the guide that comes with it for further details on the techniques demonstrated. Peel back the wrapping on the needle halfway, taking care not to disrupt the laminar airflow over the needle. Hold the syringe from underneath and keep it horizontal, the tip pointing to your other hand. Remove the syringe cap cover without touching the syringe tip. Attach the needle, taking care not to contaminate the needle or syringe tip. Remove the wrapping and place the syringe in the manipulation area. Discard the wrapping and syringe cap with the non-sharp waste. Unwrap an alcohol swab or a sterile gauze and place it on the work surface, taking care not to contaminate its upper surface. Holding the barrel of the syringe from underneath, grasp the extremity of the needle guard between your thumb and index finger. With your wrist pressed together, pull on the needle guard, moving your hands away from one another. Place the needle guard on the alcohol swab, the opening towards the back of the hood. In the following procedures, we will see how to withdraw diluent from a solution bag, how to reconstitute a powdered medication in a vial, and how to withdraw the reconstituted medication from the vial. Hang the solution bag in the center of the hood, Disinfect the injection port with an alcohol swab and let it dry. Discard the swab on the side of the hood with the non-sharp waste. Push on the plunger to expel air from the syringe. Remove the needle guard. Lift the end of the bag, taking care not to contaminate the injection port or to disrupt the laminar airflow with your hands. Holding the barrel of the syringe from underneath, slowly insert the needle into the injection port at a 90 degree angle, making sure the needle does not pierce the sides. Pull back on the plunger end plate to draw in fluid until the desired volume is obtained. Work at a 70 degree angle throughout this operation. Return the syringe to a vertical position and clear any air bubbles, tapping with your fingers to free the bubbles from the rubber of the plunger. Expel the air by pushing on the plunger. Before removing the needle, adjust to the required volume. To do so, line up the outside edge of the plunger, the part in contact with the fluid, with the graduation indicating the desired volume. Bring the syringe back to a 70 degree position and withdraw the needle. Cap the needle and perform verifications as required by facility protocols. First, make sure all the powder has been dislodged from the walls of the vials and then disinfect each vial, wiping in the direction of the opening of the hood. Handle only the surface of the swab that does not touch the site to be disinfected, taking care that there are no threads on the surface of the swab. Let the alcohol dry and remove the needle guard. Holding the syringe from underneath, insert the needle at a 45 degree angle into the circle in the center of the stopper, bevel side up. Rapidly bring the syringe to 90 degrees. Tilt the syringe vial assembly to 30 degrees and slowly inject a small amount of fluid into the vial. Allow a little air to return into the syringe as soon as resistance is felt. Alternate between these two steps until all of the diluent has been injected. Equalize the pressure in the vial by drawing in a volume of air at least equivalent to the volume of fluid injected. 
place the file on the work surface and remove the needle. To prevent a needle stick, recap the needle slowly, your wrists pressed against each other. Take care not to contaminate the needle. Set the syringe aside. If there is any liquid on the vial stopper, wipe it with an alcohol swab. Shake the vial, if the medication permits, with a gentle circular motion. Wait until the product is completely dissolved and the foam has disappeared before withdrawing from the vial. Disinfect the rubber stopper of the vial and let it dry. Hold the syringe at a 70 degree angle and draw in a volume of air equivalent to the amount of solution to be withdrawn. Remove the needle guard. Insert the needle at a 45 degree angle and rapidly bring the syringe up to a 90 degree angle. With the palm of your hand facing upward, slide your index and middle finger on either side of the neck of the vial. Invert the syringe vial assembly to a 70 degree angle and inject a little air. This creates positive pressure that pushes the fluid into the syringe when the plunger is released. Draw a little fluid into the syringe by pulling on the plunger end plate. Raise the vial gradually to ensure that the bevel of the needle remains in the solution. Repeat these operations until the entire desired volume has been withdrawn. Expel the air from the syringe by using one large bubble to capture all the smaller bubbles. Then tap the syringe barrel to free the bubble from the rubber plunger. If necessary, draw a little air from the vial to create a bubble. Adjust the volume in the syringe to the desired level. If necessary, return air from the syringe into the vial. Place the vial on the work surface. Remove and recap the needle. Check the volume and quality of the finished product. Place the syringe beside the vial for further verifications. A multiple additive set can be used to facilitate the reconstitution and withdrawal of solution from several vials of the same medication. We will look at how such a device is used next. Clamp the tubing and attach to the multiple way valve if necessary. Make sure the valve is completely closed. Holding the bag firmly by the administration set port, remove the plastic protector. Remove the plastic protector from the tubing spike, taking care not to contaminate it. Keep the administration set port two centimeters and a half from the work surface throughout this operation. Insert the spike in deeply, turning it as you push. Hang the bag in the center of the hood. Remove the cap from the multiple way valve and keep it between your fingers. Take the syringe in your other hand. With the tip of the syringe facing the valve, remove the cap and keep it between your fingers. Attach the syringe to the valve. Remove the cap from the valve's needle site and attach a needle to the valve. Unclamp the tubing and open the valve in the direction of the solution. Keeping the syringe at a 70 degree angle, draw in fluid until all the air is eliminated from the tubing. Bring the syringe to a vertical position and eliminate any air bubbles. Gently pull on the plunger end plate and then expel the air in the syringe by pushing on the plunger until you see a drop at the tip of the needle. Close the valve and hang up the syringe. Note that a vented system for medication reconstitution should be installed at this point. We will see later how to do this. For the moment, let's just complete the withdrawal of diluent from the bag. 
Open the valve in the direction of the solution to adjust the volume to the desired amount and then close the valve. If necessary, perform verifications as required by facility protocols. If you have to reconstitute several products, change the needle in the multiple additive set between the different products. Before continuing, let's look at how to install a venting needle in a vial. First, dislodge the powder from the sides of each vial and disinfect the rubber stoppers. Attach a small caliber needle to a 1 milliliter syringe. Remove the plunger from the syringe and discard it with the non-sharp waste along the side of the hood. Insert the venting needle system at a 45 degree angle into the edge of the central circle on the rubber stopper. Now turn the vial so that the venting needle is at 12 o'clock. Raise the needle before reconstitution so that it does not dip in the solution. Let's continue now with the reconstitution of the powder. First, make sure that the multiple additive set is open in the direction of the needle. Keeping the vial on the work surface, insert the needle at a 45 degree angle into the edge of the rubber stopper at the 3 o'clock position. Bring the syringe to a 90 degree angle, taking care not to displace the other needle. Slowly inject all the fluid. Gradually raise the venting needle to prevent the bevel from dipping in the solution. Withdraw the diluent syringe from the vial, cap the needle, and hang up the syringe. Withdraw the venting needle system and insert it into another vial of the same medication that you have previously disinfected. When all the vials have been reconstituted, wipe the rubber stoppers with an alcohol swab if there's any liquid on them and shake them if indicated. Wait until the product is completely dissolved and the foam has disappeared before disinfecting the vials again and making any withdrawals. The next sequence shows three techniques performed using transfer devices. Such devices are preferred for addition or withdrawal of fluid from multi-dose vials because they minimize the number of punctures of the vial and thus reduce associated risks of contamination. Remove the plastic protector from the administration set port of the bag. Remove the protector from the spike, taking care not to contaminate it. Insert the spike in deeply, turning it as you push. Keep the administration set port of the bag two centimeters and a half from the work surface throughout this operation. Hang the solution bag in the center of the hood. Remove the protector on the transfer device if there is one. If the connection site is not protected, disinfect it with an alcohol swab. Expel the air from the syringe and then remove the tip cap if there is one. Attach the syringe to the transfer device. Withdraw the desired volume, working at an angle of 70 degrees and taking care not to obstruct the laminar airflow. Draw in a little extra fluid to fill the space occupied by the air bubble and, if appropriate, to compensate for the volume contained in the needle.